Hi everyone, what's going on? Working art is certainly less fun than work is smart. So why spend hours editing images you can edit in less than half of the time and better? In today's video, we're gonna learn 10 unexpected Lightroom tips to edit like a pro. 10 smart Lightroom hacks I use every single day that can help you to be more efficient on photo editing and don't waste too much time and unnecessary energy in front of your desk. Sometimes we end up having a too dark or too bright final image. And one of the main reasons is because the background the color around the image in the develop model misleads us. For example, have a look at how this image it looks with a bright or dark background. Our perceptions of its brightness change drastically. Generally, it's a good habit to set the background color based on the direction you want to give the image, airy, moody, and so on. It can change the way you choose to edit your photos. For instance, if you plan to post your photos on the web, the white background will help you, as on most sites, your photos will display on a white background. To change the background color is extremely simple. All you need to do is uh, hover your cursor over the space around your photo, right-click, and then select which color you would like to display. Lightroom interface can sometimes feel busy and quite distracting to evaluate your editing without any distraction. There is a super handy feature that you will find yourself using all the time. By pressing the L key, you can dim Lightroom by 80%, except for the image you are working on. In this way, you can see your photo clearer without any distraction. If you then press L for a second time, Lightroom will be completely darted. Pressing it a third time will take you back to the normal screen. Keep your edit consistent is absolutely important. You probably found yourself many times trying to match the edits of different photos by going back and forth between them and never quite getting it right. Lightroom comes to our help with a cool tool that you can find in the develop module at the bottom. I mean this icon that says RA which means R that stands for reference. This is the image we want to use as reference image and A that stands for active so the photo you will be working on. Just click on it or use the shortcut shift R. The reference view opens up and now you need to drag the reference file into the left window and then select the image you want to work on to match the reference file. You can also set the reference image with right click and on the pop-up menu select set as reference photo. Your framing is a little bit off or it doesn't convey your vision. The crop tool is your best friend to readjust the image with the proper framing and aspect ratio. The crop tool has a really helpful overlay function. There are lots of different overlays to help you get the perfect crop such as the rule of thirds, golden spiral, the aspect ratio which is my favorite one. If you press O while you are using the crop tool Tool, you can toggle between seven different overlays to see which one might work the best. If you want to rotate the overlay, press Shift O. You can customize them by selecting which overlay to use or exclude from the top menu with Tools, Crop Guide Overlay, choose overlays to cycle. You can also select different ratios for the aspect ratios overlay with choose aspect ratios. And from here, there are many different options. I usually use this selection. For example, the four by five ratio is my favorite for vertical shots and it's perfect for Instagram posts. The 16 by nine for Instagram stories or the one by one, which I use frequently in film photography for square format cameras. Normally cropping an image involves first cropping and then dragging your crop to line up the image the way you like. Holding Alt option in Lightroom sets you free from this tedious task and will automatically center your crop. This little no Lightroom features is a huge help. Dust, spots on your sensor or your lens, nothing more common than this. Removing any spots in Lightroom is very easy. You just need to select the spot removal tool in the develop module and you will find a simple checkbox at the bottom of the main windows called visualize spots. This tool makes all the difference. In a clear black and white overlay, you can identify your spots so much better and easier without stressing your eyes. An easy and quick way to delete a layer in uh, the spot removal tool is to select Alt, just click on the pin and voila, gone. As you can tell, this is not a Lightroom feature or a secret hack, but this tool has become an integral part of my editing workstation. I can't stress enough how important it is to work in a well light control environment when you edit. A super bright room or a very dark room is probably the worst scenario for photo or video editing. Thank you reached me out asking if I would be interested in reviewing the screen bar plus LED lamp. So yeah, why not? After using this LED lamp for two months, I can definitely say that it's absolutely fantastic. It's basically an 18 inch long aluminum construction LED light bar that sits on top of my iMac with a counterweight clamp. It's extremely lightweight, it's flicker free, it's also certified to be free of blue light hazard which can potentially cause retina damage. It provides a nice white light over my desk and work area and it doesn't interfere with any glare on the monitor and your eyes. The Screen Bar Plus uses a desktop dial knob that allows you to control brightness 
the light temperature, and it also works uh, as the power button. To connect the controller, there is a cable split uh, into two ends. One goes into the light and the other goes into the iMac USB port or your power source. The light is very easy to attach. You simply pull out uh, the counterweight and place it on top of a monitor. No screws or hardware that can damage your monitor. I found it fits perfectly both my iMac and MacBook Pro. So for anybody who edits uh, at the computer for the majority of their day, I can't recommend it enough. It's not on the chip side, but this screen bar is absolutely fantastic and honestly, I can't imagine life without it. Make better editing decisions. And if you are enjoying this video so far and you are getting value, hit the thumbs up. It will tell YouTube to show this video to more people, which I really appreciate. Grazie mille. We are not always sure about the direction to take our images with editing, and experimenting and comparing side by side some different edits of the same file can be very beneficial, but we don't want to mess up with the file and fill up our hard drive with tons of copies of an image. Virtual copies and snapshots are the perfect solution to keep the workflow clean and efficient. So basically, instead of duplicating an image to work on it, you can create multiple copies within Lightroom. To create a virtual copy, select the file, right click on the image when you are in the film strip panel and select create virtual copy. You can create as many different virtual copies as you want to experiment with different edits before deciding the one you prefer. Sometimes working with too many virtual copies can be kind of a mess. That's where snapshots comes into play. In addition to being one of the Lightroom most underrated features, snapshot is basically a way to preserve an edit state so that you can easily switch back to it if needed. Snapshots save you time when you want to switch between different different versions, different presets results, or to jump quickly through different development stages of the image. Snapshots are related to the entries in the history panel, and you can actually turn any entry in the history panel into a snapshot by right-click and choosing Create Snapshot. Local adjustments. They are the most powerful tool you have in Lightroom to develop your images, and mastering some hidden shortcuts can speed up your edit a ton and makes the process more enjoyable. Let's see some killer shortcuts. For the gradient tool, holding down the Option key and drag the external line. You can keep the central line transition blocked. Or another simple one, hold the Alt Option and drag your gradient to invert it onto the other side of your image. Here are a couple of my favorite tricks for a radial filter. Hold down Shift and drag to create a perfect circular gradient. Another cool one, Command and double click on the pin and the reader filter will fit the image. And then the brush tool. If you have ever spent hours painting masks in Lightroom, then this shortcut will save you a lot of time. Auto mask option constrains the edit of the adjustment brush to a narrow band of colors that are very close to where you originally started brushing in your adjustments. Say you are trying to mask this object that has a straight edge. You can select this simple checkbox with option to either enable or disable the auto mask or, and here is the trick, you can can press command to keep active the auto mask as long as you hold down the command key. This is really cool and can save you a lot of time and effort. It's not always perfect, but it's a powerful tool. Being able to increase or decrease the intensity of a local adjustment with one click is extremely handy. When you're using the adjustment brush or graduated or riddle filters to make local adjustments, there is actually a function to control the amounts your adjustments affect your photos. If you click this small arrow, the panel will collapse and you will be able to change the amount the filters affects your photo by just dragging left and write this opacity slider. This can be especially helpful if you decide you have gone too far with an adjustment and you want to change it easily. A time-saving shortcut is to hold the Alt Option key and select the center dot of your graduated filter or radial filter, whatever. Click it and then drag right to intensify the global effect or left to lessen it. How cool is that? When you are masking, one of the issues you may encounter is that if you are adding a graduated filter to an image that has a red sky, it can be quite hard to see the red mask. Lightroom has a handy shortcut to change the color of the mask when applying a local adjustment. By default it will display as red, but you can also change it to green, gray and black. To do this, simply press Shift O. As you probably already know, you can toggle the mask on and off by pressing O instead of using the checkbox Show Selected Mask Overlay. This is not for everyone, but it's really cool. If you are not only a photographer, but also a content creator, you know how much time you spend creating a video thumbnail. The Loop Overlay feature lets you display a PNG overlay containing text over the top of your image, so you can see whether the composition of your image provides the right fit. It's also a good visualization tool if you are interested in submitting images to magazines. That's because magazines often need uh, photos with empty space to drop in uh, headlines or text. So you have to go to View, 
loop overlay layout image. Navigate to the folder containing your overlay and open it to see how it works with your photo. Make sure that the file you use for the overlays is saved as PNG file as it supports transparency. I want to give you two extra bonus tips. When you use local adjustments, sometimes you might find that some settings get stuck. So each time you want to start with a new local adjustment, you find yourself resetting each slider every time. And it can be both time consuming and annoying. That happens when you move the adjustment sliders before for applying local adjustments. So in doing so, Lightroom keeps memorize your settings for each extra local adjustment added. To reset all the settings to zero, you need to press the Alt Option button and you will see a reset button appear at the top, which you can press to set all the sliders back to their original position. Make sure to do this before applying the local adjustment. A quicker method to reset all the sliders is to double click on Effect. Now, each time you will add a new local adjustment, you will start from a clean zero base. My last bonus tip is very simple but very handy the shortcut command shift forward slash or command forward slash it depends on your keyboard language that shows the Lightroom shortcuts based on the specific model you are using you have a complete list of shortcuts for the library module the develop module the map and so on great if you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up and if you don't mind subscribe to the channel thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you in the next video ciao